Peace to everybody, man. Shout out to everybody. We're going to talk some boxing. Praise be to the Most High. You know how it is. So Katie Taylor versus Rose Volante. I'm telling you, man, that's a good-ass fight. I looked at Rose Volante. I look out in the face-off with the Tevin Farmer versus um, Junior Cairo. And um, I'm liking what I see. I'm liking what I see. Rose Volante is the WBO bantamweight champion, I believe. No, light, lightweight champion. So um, it's going to be a unification. We'll see how this fight turns out. Like I said before, Kate Taylor, uh, she's fast. She's quick. She reminds me of Amir Khan. She reminds me of Sugar Leonard a little bit. She don't really got a lot of pop. Um, so if Rose Volante, who's a body puncher, if she can get her shots in in between those shots, kind of like how Mikey, um, like how Danny Garcia did with Amir Khan, this could be an interesting fight night. And um, people are overlooking Rose Volante. I'm telling you, man. So I'm looking forward to that fight. That's that's a fight over the weekend. I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Tevin Farmer, he's going to be facing Juno Carroll. Juno Juno Carroll. Um, I don't know. You know, we'll see. We'll see how that outcome turns out. Like I said before, my point of view of Tevin Farmer is he's an overhyped fighter, in my opinion. Just like how Gabe Rosado is an overhyped fighter, in my opinion. The thing about both of them, Gabe Rosado and Tevin Farmer, is they didn't really have amateur experience and background. So you can kind of give them a pass on that. And that they learned the sport of boxing. They really dedicated themselves to the craft. But to put them in the league, Rosado and Farmer in the league of some really elite athletes, I think is pushing it. You know, it's like when they say Eric Slandy Lara could face Floyd Mayweather. And he'd be a threat to Floyd. I was like, no. <laughs> and the fight against Canelo proved that point. And the fight against Jared Hurd that proved that, proved that point. And you would say, well, Jared Hurd was bigger. No. Because we saw him face... Anybody remember the fight of Carlos Molina? He got a gift draw on Carlos Molina, if anybody remembers that. And Carlos Molina was a fighter that implemented boxing skill to get to the inside of, of, of the other fighter and beat him up. Uh, if he could do that, obviously Floyd could do it. Um, when you look at his fight against just recently there, um, Castaño, right? Uh, Brian Castaño. You look at his fight against Paul Williams, the end of the fight against Paul Williams. His fight with Canelo. Um, his fight with Angulo. I mean, Bob and Weave, Slip, slip punches, and you can, you can get this guy. So, and Floyd can do that. So that's why I always said a lot of people overhype fighters, and then when they, when they're exposed, then they look, they, they don't, they don't say nothing after that. Triple G, oh, Triple G's too big for Floyd. Blah 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 blah. Canelo comes and beats his ass twice. Twice he beat him. Nobody says anything. Nobody say. In fact, they're saying Triple G beat Canelo. <laughs> I'm still hearing this stupid talk about Triple G beat Canelo. Right? Canelo walks Triple G's ass down, beats him up. Triple G's face is all messed up at the end of the fight. Canelo's just got a, a little busted hat, ha, um, busted eye from a headbutt. But, but, Canelo loses that fight? Triple G outbox Canelo? The jab was great all night? I'm like, what jab? What jab? If the jab was so effective, why is Canelo landing all those punches on Triple G? You know? It's just common sense. But, you know, people, their eyes are still blind. Uh, which which leads me to the Errol Spence versus Mikey Garcia, and I'm listening to e Ego Boxing Ego, and he's talking about how Errol is gonna be, you know, that Mikey Mikey's overhyped or whatever. Facing Errol, not understanding the the, the 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 caliber of opponent that Mikey is. Oh, Mikey's not a Floyd Mayweather. He's more like Juan Manuel Marquez. That's what Ego's saying. I'm like, you so fucking clueless, bro. <laughs> like you so clueless, you know, Marquez. Is a counterpuncher. You know who's like Marquez? Danny Garcia. Mikey Garcia is nothing like Danny Garcia. Alright? Mikey just happened to be Mexican. He and Marquez only share one thing in common. They're Mexican fighters. Alright? Ego is, is so off on that. You know? And the problem with guys like Ego is that they're so pro-black fighter that they distort the reality. So he's trying to praise Spence so much that he's diminishing who Mikey is. And again, some people are praising Mikey and diminishing what Spence is. I'm telling you, this is a 50-50 fight. And it's nothing about size. And people are talking about how Spence looks dry and dehydrated. And, and so Spence is a professional. He's going to get 
okay? He gonna come in and fight. Now, he does look a little bit small, but I guess that's for speed, and he wants to get more quickness to match Mikey Garcia's speed, all right? So that's what he's doing. The dot eyes cross all T's just in case he can't get Mikey out of there. He knows it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a boxing match. He's ready to go 12 rounds, all right? And Earl Spence is an enormously skilled and gifted fighter, all right? Yes, he has some flaws. Mikey has some flaws too. Mikey kind of winds down in the later rounds. He kind of takes a break in the later rounds, catches his win. Another thing I notice is if the stronger fighter can get an edge on him later on in the fight. However, this is what I would say about Mikey Garcia versus Errol Spence and why that fight is going to be both explosive and yet tactical at the same time. I know Robert Garcia's gym, man. And we see Marcos Maidana come out of that gym, give Floyd a hell of a fight. Nobody thought Marcos Maidana would give Floyd such a, a, a tremendous fight. We saw um, Jose Cito Lopez versus Keith Thurman, a hell of a fight, right? So I absolutely know that they got Mikey in the best possible shape to face Errol Spence and to accomplish. And Mikey's composure tells me that Mikey is, is, is honed in. He's, he's, he's trained himself into what he has to face. Mikey don't call out nobody if he, if he didn't have a plan. And they have a game plan for Errol Spence. Now, anything could happen. Errol Spence could stop him. But they have a game plan for Errol Spence. And say what you want. You could say he's not flashy. You could say he's not Floyd. You could say all of that shit, right? Because fighting style-wise, he's not Floyd. We all know this, right? Fighting style-wise, Mikey's Mikey. Ain't nobody that does Mikey style, all right? Fundamentally simple, but he and Errol Spence do share a lot of qualities in common. The only difference is, one of the different things is, Mikey's been fighting, time after time, bigger fighters than himself. Errol Spence didn't have to deal with that. Errol Spence has only fought in one weight class. Mikey has continuously proven that a smaller guy can go up in a big, bigger weight class and beat a bigger opponent. So Mikey has that record behind him. Plus, he's had extensive championship experience. So that is why I have so much confidence in Mikey Garcia holding his own in this fight. I never predicted that Mikey would win. I only back Mikey because he can make history. So I want to see that happen. All right. I love Errol Spence. Errol Spence is a dog. Errol Spence is extremely gifted and talented and skilled Boxer, and we've been hearing whole week how he sparred Floyd, how much he's improved from there, how consistent he is. Uh, Leonard LB was talking about the consistency of Errol Spence. So I get that. I get it. Right? And believe you me, Errol Spence is going to show up on fight night. All right? That dude looks ready. Mikey looks ready. So you're going to get a hell of a fight. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. And that's the only thing that you really want to know as fight fans. You want a hell of a fight. Whoever wins this fight got bragging rights, yes, but it takes two to tango. So it might be an epic fight night. You just never know. And, and again, you, it doesn't mean because you have boxing skill it won't be epic. There's lots of things that could happen in a fight. Now, these guys probably calculated and worked out every possible scenario they could think of. But at the end of the day... It's going to be boxing skill. It's going to be boxing intellect that determines this fight. And boxing skill and boxing intellect is not based on... This is boxing. This is not based on athleticism. Boxing is not based on um, 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 how flashy you are. Boxing is not based on the color of your skin. Boxing is based on the fundamentals. The fundamentals. All right? Now, the trainer of Errol Spence, he knows he's going up against the Garcias. He knows this. And he knows they are not to be uh, joked around with. Okay? So that's why this fight is so epic. This fight is epic. I'm not saying Danny Garcia wins. He may lose. What I'm saying, though, is I'm almost putting, if I had to put money on it, I don't think Errol Spence is going to stop Mikey. And I don't think Mikey's going to take all this punishment that everybody's talking about. All right? And when I listen to Leonard or LB talking about Spence and if Mikey can land power on Spence, <laughs> I wouldn't, as Errol Spence, I would take it that he, he, Mikey could hit, Mikey could crack. That's how I take it. So I box his ass. All right? 
honestly, man, you guys have to see and understand what kind of fight you're seeing. I watched Mikey on the bags. That that brother was cracking them bags, and that was body punches. And there's a reason you need to have body punches in this fight against Errol Spence. There's a reason you have to do that. Mikey's not known as a body puncher, per se. So it's going to be an interesting fight. I hear people predicting and putting their, their name on it. Mikey going to win this fight. And like uh, Boxing Eagle said, well, what's the reasoning? Well, I've seen uh, 76, I think 76 talk his name, break it down. He broke down why Mikey would be able to handle Errol Spence. He's not going to stand in front of him and go toe-to-toe -to -toe early on. That's dumb, right? And Errol Spence is, is a master of inside bunny work. Like they said, I think the best bunny puncher right now in boxing is Errol Spence. All right? Not Triple G and not Canelo. Errol Spence is the best bunny puncher in boxing. And that's a big plus for him because... That's how you break down a fighter. That's how you stop a fighter. So Errol Spence, he's really beautiful with that left hooks to the body. You know, sometimes the straight left to the body. Beautiful stuff. He comes with the right hook to the body if you're trying to circle him. Um, so you have to know how to keep your distance, maintain range. So that if he goes to a right hook to the body, you either roll under it, let him miss, um, block it, catch it, and shoot. You know, there are many different ways to deal with a right hook to the body. Now... A lot of people, you know, even Robert Garcia said Errol Spence is kind of basic. Errol Spence ain't basic. All right? Errol Spence is not a basic fighter. I'm going to just let people know that. Yes, he doesn't use certain subtleties with feints and stuff, but he's not basic. All right? He uses some special effects in there. And he's because he does pivot work and stuff, the special effects are, 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 are fantastic. Mikey also uses special effects, which is why, but he's very subtle with it. He's very subtle with his feints. He's very subtle with his special effects. So, um, <clears throat> well, Mikey may not always, he may not always employ things that maybe a Floyd Mayweather or somebody else will employ. The reason he's beating these bigger fighters is because he's doing something. There's something he's doing. And that's where you guys have to do your homework on Mikey. I already said some of what he does, but there's a lot more he does. It's very subtle. There's a lot Errol Spence does, which is very subtle as well. So don't get it twisted. And it's different, like they say, when you're watching it from a distance, whereas you're up close with the guys, so you can see them fainting each other and, and doing some other interesting things with each other that cut certain angles. And I, I'm telling you, man, Errol Spence with that pivot work is beautiful to watch. Now, pivot work is not everything, and but 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 it could work in his favor if uh, Mikey is using excessive movement to circle Errol Spence. You know, if you if Errol Spence, I hope his trainer did this. Go and watch Mayweather versus Pacquiao. And watch at Mayweather's pivot work. That's the, the key to how Mayweather was able to keep track of Pacquiao. Now, Pacquiao, unfortunately for Pacquiao, he's not really uh, in the pocket kind of guy. He goes in and out, which is something that Mikey will have to do. Pacquiao's pretty precise with his footwork, but the problem is Floyd kept on cutting the angles off on him because he would pivot into a certain stance. So you always see Pacquiao. Arrow wants to go get Mikey Garcia. He would probably want to do that early. But Mikey, you see, that there's two things you got to watch for. There's a subtlety in boxing. Footwork is everything. So footwork will get you to trick a guy and get him out of position. Arrow does that pretty well. As I said, for the pivot work of Arrow is what... So a guy can... You, you, you think you have the shot open. Um, you think you have the shot open against Arrow... And Errol will pivot at the right time as you're throwing the shot down the line. So that's that's one of the things about Errol that's just beautiful. I mean, I could break down these guys in so many different ways, right? Mikey, Mikey might first of all faint the straight right to see what Errol would do so he could time Errol properly. Because Mikey, I'm telling you, Errol has great timing. Mikey got better timing. He got better timing. I'm going to tell you that. That's Mikey's great with time, and he puts combinations together. That's how. Did you see how he knocked down Robert Easter? Go check it out again. Perfect timing, and the dude's reaction time is ridiculous. But you don't you don't see it because he's so casual with it. But Mikey got good reaction time, and Errol Spence is not gonna beat Mikey on reaction time. Mikey gonna have the fast because he's smaller. He gonna have the he gonna have the quicker reaction time. 
I can guarantee that. Spence is more explosive. And Spence is more, what's the word I'm looking for? More rehearsed. He's sharper, in my opinion, than Mikey is. But Mikey going to be quicker. <clears throat> so that's what I'm seeing. Um, but Mikey is so casual with what he does, you don't actually understand what he's doing. But he throw, he would throw a faint, faint, and then he'd come at you. Like how he faked the hooks on Adrian Broner. You guys gotta go watch it again. How he tamed down Adrian Broner was was so freaking clinical, right? Because Robert Garcia and they already knew the formula to beat Adrian Broner off of Marcus Maidana. Marcus Maidana was more sloppy. He was missing punches and think Mikey was precise. It was like doing a surgery on Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner only caught on later on in the fight, and you saw Adrian Broner land some hard shots on Mikey, and Mikey was taking it. And Broner can crack. Broner dropped uh, Sean Porter. Um, Broner hurt Jesse Vargas coming down the stretch. Broner can crack. Okay? He hits hard. Harder than Mayweather, according to Marcus McDonough. So Broner can hit hard. But at the end of the day, um, Mikey was able to keep Broner at bay. And again, it's about varying your shots. Mikey got that one. Errol Spence, he, he don't do it. He he does it, but not not to the level that Mikey does it, where you 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 change up, the, you know, you change up the power. You land on people all the time. You get them guessing. So you touch a guy with some serious power to let him know, and then the next time you touch him, you don't have to touch him that hard because he's anticipating. Or he, you you touch him. You remember it's timing. So you touch him at a odd time, and the guy will react to that. So you catch him at a odd time, and you place it really nicely. You don't need all that power, first of all. And that's another thing people don't understand. Um, you don't need to have a whole lot of power to... Okay, take, for instance, um, Victor Pastor versus... Um, what's the kid's name? Um, Lucas Matisse. Victor Pastor is not known as a knockout artist. Victor Pastor knocked out Lucas Matisse. Placement. Timing. That's better than... That trumps... We just saw... Uh, Dimitri Bivo versus um, Joe Smith Jr. Timing, placement. That's the key. You know what I'm saying? And only, like, there are a lot of things I want to say, but suffice it to say that in boxing, there's a lot of stuff people don't really take into consideration. So with Katie Taylor versus, um, with Katie Taylor versus, uh, um, uh, Rose Valente, that's going to be an interesting fight. I think people are underestimating Rose Valente. I suggest people take a look at those fights that Rose had with um, some other opponents. She's a Brazilian fighter. We don't see many outstanding Brazilian fighters these days. But she's a Brazilian fighter and um, she does body work like Errol Spence. She works that body, man. And she gets people out of there every now and then. In fact, she has a higher knockout ratio than Katie Taylor does. Katie Taylor can box. Uh, she's exciting. Um, it's more like Brian Castellano. I'm Castanio. She's, um, what can I say? She's, she's good, but I wouldn't say she's great. Um, she's hyped up for a woman. It's kind of like she's better... <clears throat> She aggressive and stuff, and, and she plays the punches nicely, but she has to step up her game. She has to get better, you know? Like, um, this this other hyped fighter, um, what's her name? That trains with Andre Ward, and they um, forgot her name now. And she's also going to have a unification fight so that she can be on undisputed, um, undisputed middleweight champion of the world. I forgot what it is. Coming to me and it's just disappearing. You guys know who I'm talking about. But she also, she also is uh, I, I, kind of basic. She got certain things she can do. I, I, I hate when they're just throwing punches all the time. Just throwing a lot of punches and, and a lot of punches. And she's bigger than the other the other woman. Like when I saw her fight, um, Hannah, what's it? Hannah Gabriel, I think is her name. Hannah Gabriel, I thought, oh, box her ass and dropped her too. And I thought that um, she tried to weight bully. Hannah, Hannah Gabriel. I think it's Hannah Gabriel's her name. And um, 
Again, it's not my thing. You know what I'm saying? The sweet science is what I look for. But they gave her the fight. They gave her the fight. She got her ass dropped. Kind of gave us our box in our ass. But they gave her the fight because she was a weight bully. You know? And she did, in the middle rounds, you know, land certain punches. Oh, shoot. And then came and it just disappeared on me. But I'm not really impressed with her, to be honest with you. Um, so, look out for that fight. Katie Taylor versus Rose Valente. I think it's going to be a good fight. Rose Valente is undefeated as well. Uh, I hear people talking down Rose Valente as if Katie Taylor is just going to run through her. I just don't see it. And like I told you before, and you know, a lot of people thought that Amir Khan would just run through Danny Garcia. It didn't happen, right? So I think people need to pay attention. Katie Taylor need to pay attention too, uh, to Rose Valente. She's not a joke. So hopefully, hopefully they do. They're talking about Rose Valente is 36 years old. You look at Rose Valente. She looks harder. She looks harder than Katie Taylor. She looks stronger than Katie Taylor. Just look at Rose Valente. All right, that means Rose Valente and Katie Taylor ain't no big power puncher. So I think people are overlooking Rose Valente. Juno Carroll. Juno Carroll, well, this is what's happening. Juno Carroll is he kind of got into the head, in my opinion, of Tevin Farmer. Tevin Farmer is going to try and go out there and, you know, really murk Juno Carroll. Juno Carroll is a... Interesting style, poor boxer, more of a swarmer, a kind of pressure fighter, but he's very technical with what he does. He had a draw with his, his most recent fight before Tevin Farmer. Didn't look that great. So Tevin Farmer's thinking <laughs> that that's the Junior Juno Carroll that will come in. No, that's not the Junior Carroll that will come in. What, what kind of Juno Carroll will come in? Very motivated Juno Carroll. He ain't got nothing to lose and everything to gain, so he's going to come motivated. Right now, he's very happy. I'm watching his mood and everything. Tevin Farmer's the guy that's kind of, you know, on the edge. And he's kind of angry. I don't know, man. I'm hoping for Tevin Farmer to, to pull this one out uh, so he can stay champion. Um, but, you know, anything can happen. So, we'll see what happens with Judah Carroll versus Tevin Farmer. Because Judah Carroll, he, he never lost before. And so, I don't know, man. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I, I watched Juno Carroll fight, and he, he breaks you down to the body. Now, he don't have that tremendous punching power, but he does have that relentless attack. So, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. That's what I'm saying. All right? So, that's all I got to say for now. Those are the fights that I actually want to see. Not Tevin Farmer versus Juno Carroll. I want to see um, Katie Taylor versus uh, Rose Valente. That's the fight I want to see. And I also want to see, of course, Errol Spence versus Mikey Garcia. I got to go try and get those fights, uh, the pay-per-view fights. I don't ha I have a way to pay for pay-per-view fucks online, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to get to see those fights. Because those fights, that that's the fight. Errol Spence versus Mikey Garcia is the fight that you want to see. Oh, by the way, anybody saying that Errol Spence shouldn't get credit if he beats Mikey Garcia... All right, because everybody be talking about Mikey Garcia beating Spence. Anybody saying that Spence shouldn't get credit for beating Mikey Garcia is a mad person. I don't care how he beats him. Mikey Garcia, look at Mikey Garcia's resume, man. There ain't nobody Errol Spence or nobody, any of these welterweights except for um, Keith Thurman and Sean Porter, who beat Danny Garcia, who has a deep resume. But even Danny Garcia's resume is not as impressive as Mikey's because Mikey went up so many weight classes, all right? So, Mikey Garcia's, if, if Errol Spence beats Mikey Garcia, who dared to be great, you got to give Errol Spence the credit for that, however he beats him. And it already don't matter what people say because he already be on a pay-per-view and you're going to be that close to being a pay-per-view star anyway because he's going to get the Pacquiao fight for, for sure. So, I don't care what these casuals and all these other people who are biased towards Mikey Garcia say. And again, <laughs> I'm saying all of this so people will understand. I want to see Mikey Garcia win. That's why I pick him. I'm only picking him because I want to see him win. But believe you me, I like Errol Spence a lot. All right? And he is the truth. Okay? 
So, and like I said before in another video, it's more than likely that he, even if this fight goes the distance, it's more than likely he wins the fight. Because like I said before, people are underestimating him, which is stupid. Uh, I'm glad Mikey's not. Now, Mikey has a plan, so we will see. All right? It may be a very close fight, and Errol may get the nod. It may be a, just a unanimous decision win, where Errol beats down Mikey. Or Mikey doesn't engage as much. It might be that. But it's it's like, even though it's a 50-50 fight, Errol has certain things, like I said before, that allow him to have certain advantages. Mikey can nullify those things if he fights a certain kind of fight, no doubt about it. He has a big shot of beating Errol, more than I think any other fighter out there. But I will say, Errol does have the tools and equipment to win this fight, and he has a lot more he has a lot of advantages. Uh, so, and when I think about those kinds of advantages, breaking down a fighter to their body is one of the principal things. It's like one of the fundamentals of boxing. You see. So, anyways, I spent a lot of time talking to you guys. Peace to you guys. Leave the comments in the comment section below. You can subscribe also to my channel. Don't forget you can donate to my channel via Rustin Union Moneygram. Peace to you guys. I'm out.